summer sales are now on. Bargains in every section. That's if you can make it into town with the weather the way it is today. The Weather Bureau hasn't been too kind, especially with school holidays in full swing. If the Weather Bureau can't cheer you up, at least I can. After the news, we'll talk to a lady who knows how to get a super suntan to... Good afternoon, Sydney Weather Bureau flood warning section. Uh, it's Marge Hill reporting the river reading. Well, good afternoon, Mrs. Hill. 10.80. Uh, we'd like you to give us further reports at three hourly intervals. Done. We've been getting some reports of rain north of us. Wondering what the next situation is for the next 12 hours. Uh, yes, I've had a look at that. It would mainly concern the hunter, wouldn't it? The tributaries and the hunter, I think. Possibly, uh, go for a preliminary warning late this afternoon. Well, wait till we get the next, uh, set of... The Weather uh, Bureau has area. just issued a warning that the current weather conditions should continue for the next 12 hours. Roads are expected to be cut at many river and creek crossings. Motorists are advised to drive with extreme care and avoid troubled areas. Police are diverting motorists. Sporting officials report that major events could be cancelled today. A final decision on today's racing program has yet to be made. Southern suburban areas could experience minor flooding. Residents are advised to contact their local police or the State Emergency Services Centre. I'll Stay see tuned for the latest I, weather I don't details. think I'll have any problem with this and I'll get it down to you at the uh, earliest possible means. Gary? Yes. This height's getting pretty high at Wagga there, and I've just had an urgent request for sandbags, and their flood boats are pretty heavily committed. Uh, well, we investigated requirements for army support. The Natural Disasters Organisation probably would be the next approach to seek their assistance in the transport. Oh, Colonel Cooper, Rob Stock from the Natural Disasters Organisation. I've just got a um, fairly serious flood warning that have come through from uh, the Bureau of Meteorology. There will be quite uh, major flooding in, in a, a few of the towns. There may be a requirement to move uh, equipment into uh, some New South Wales country towns and perhaps helicopters at strategic points. Major flooding has inundated hundreds of homes today. A two-metre overflow from the partially completed dam is threatening more urban areas. The Army is assisting local authorities and volunteers in evacuation of thousands of flood-stricken victims. Police are manning roadblocks and keeping sightseers from the affected areas. And the water's going to come up very soon. Well, they're evacuating the whole streets, the whole main street and the whole street down this side, down this side. The main thing to tell them is that we're doing it on behalf of the State Emergency Service. If they're going, we can only advise them to evacuate. The river is rising, we can advise them to evacuate. The State Emergency Service is in two little sections. Yeah. It's also open via Reading's Flat. Without that. But you'll still need more than that. As far as I can see, it's okay. Well, Andy's preparing a radio broadcast now. Yeah. Yeah. If that keeps going the way it is, it'll be over the levee in about an hour. Mm. So we better take some fairly swift action. Mm. It looks like it's going to go over. Right, when the levees broach, what's going to happen? Can you give any indication of the speed of the water? Are we going to have a rush or an undercut? Can you give us some idea of what's going to happen here? We'll get water there, coming around the end of the levee, and we'll go over there first. When it reaches that 11.9, yeah. It's going to come over here and you'll get a very fast rise in all this area. We're pretty low and get them out first. Get down around the bottom of Beeson Street, Cowan Street, and... Uh, One, two, this will be all ten, then I have it. Send over. How are you going with the householders' warnings, over? Uh, we've done about 15. We reckon we've got probably 100 to do, over. Ah, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, mate. 
I'm from State Emergency Services. Uh, I came around to warn you about your house here that uh, we expect water in your house tonight. About oh, a foot. Couldn't possibly be, mate. Yeah, Bob. Oh, hi, Russ. Problem, mate. Oh, she's on again. Oh, not another Yeah, another flood. flood. Yeah. Right, how long we got? Oh, they reckon about six hours, we don't know. Uh, how are you going for a truck? Can I get a truck to get me yeah, well, on the I figures bought this house off a real estate agent and he told me, I've just bought it, and he said there's absolutely no water ever been in this place, so I can't see how you come at that. Well, going on the figures that we've received so far, that uh, you will have about a foot of water inside your house tonight. No. And we'd like you to pack up. Couldn't see it. What's wrong? No, nothing's wrong, love. Don't take no notice of this bloke. He's, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. We won't worry about it. We'd like you to pack we'll up. No. To, uh, no, we'll be right, thanks, pal. We'll be right. No sleep again tonight, Frank, no. it looks like. Just get it up here, you fat. because the floodwaters have got into the controls. It's taking the water up from the ground floor up into the first floor. <laughs> opening, opening the doors and dropping it all out. <laughs> they want to know if we could send an electrician around. <laughs> With a diving suit on. Quiet, please, I'm going to air. You wouldn't believe it, would you? ...headquarters of the state emergency services. And for that report, it's over to Andy Fraser. Thanks, Steve. Uh, firstly, this is an important message from the Lismore local controller. It has become apparent that due to the rapid rises in the Richmond River at Lismore, an evacuation of St Anne's nursing home in Moldswood Street, Lismore, has become necessary. Anyone with a power boat no, no, no. in this evacuation... Oh, I don't know. I'm just hurrying up now. here in a minute. ...the end of the flood in Ballina Street, Lismore. The local controller stressed that the boat should not be too large... ...and the boat should not have a boat... ...and have no light... ...and the irrigation equipment locked in the flood. Floodwaters gouged gaping holes in bitumen roads and ate the edges from suburban streets. Washouts created traps for the unwary motorist. Cars and roads went underwater when creeks broke their banks. Residents prepared for another wet night. Well, it's I mean, you know, these people have been marvellous. Salvation Army, because we came out in such a fluster, you know, and in a panic that we didn't bring what we should have brought. We brought bedding and, and things, but I even forgot a towel, you know. And I brought the bird with me, the butcher of gown, brought 12 months seed for him. Okay, yeah. uh, what's the weather doing up there at the moment, Jim? When they get the warnings, they... Oh, they should take us a great deal of notice. Uh, I think they, uh, the warnings are always pretty well considered, and we try and give them the, the most accurate forecast we can. Flood boat, 9-5 November, this is Richmond, over. Richmond, this is 9-5 November, you're a week readable, over. Uh, Flood boat, 9-5 November, Richmond, uh, message. Would you go to 9-4 Brown Street and carry out Medivac? Enough. Come on, just leave him alone for a while. Never go in you lot. You want to get out of here? 
Where's that controller? I too, all right. What did you find? Well, we got them out. Yeah, we got them out, all right. When she moved back into her home, Agnes Sarkowski was looking for the small, familiar things. Old snapshots of her children, plastic flowers, the well-remembered pictures on the wall. This was the home it took her ten years to get after she came to Australia. No. Leaving a carpet for a while and after we never know. This is not good anymore. No. At the height of the flood, the whole of Mrs. Akowski's home was underwater. Floods caused widespread and massive damage early this morning following the city's wettest day for 87 years. This caravan was dragged three quarters of a mile down and smashed two houses off their stumps. What happened when your house was hit by the house next door? Well, it just shook and shuddered and we just had to get out, so we dived out the back door and swam to the orange tree. From there we dived into the mango tree and the fellow next door threw me his hose and we swung in on his patio. The new suburb was one of which any city could be proud, said one real estate man. Now, that was until the river ran its banker through here. Now, suddenly it started a land boom in reverse. Until then, the riverside frontages were the exclusive preserve of those who could afford them. Uh, exclusive because of their river views, their private boat landings and their boat launching ramps. Well, what, what you'd get for this place here, you wouldn't be able to buy a piece of ground in a high position. Mm. And people that's got land in high position would capitalise on it now. When people forget about it, we we're sort of hoping to get our prize. So if we sell now, we'd never get the prize for our house that we want. So we hope the people will eventually forget and then we'll sell. Many people who live on floodplains believe that they're not going to be flooded because floods have never occurred to the level that they've built since the area has been settled. However, there are two reasons at least why uh, it's inevitable that flooding will occur on the floodplain. The first is that floods do occur randomly, they're a chance event. There's a second reason which accentuates flooding and that is man's activity the construction of houses, uh, sealing of roads, urbanisation generally will increase flooding under some circumstances. But a lot of flooding does occur on small catchment areas that have been built up. Because areas have been sealed, the rain runs off more quickly, less water infiltrates into the ground, and so flooding is greatly accentuated in urban areas, and a lot of people have built close to small creeks, small drainage ways, don't recognise that they're in danger, but certainly flooding will occur in these situations. Your whole house is gone. Just what have you got left? What, what, what you stand up in? Yes. How many children have you got, Mr Hancock? Seven. Seven, ki yes. seven children? Yes. Where will you stay tonight? I don't know. We've got the car. If you build on the floodplain, it's inevitable that you will be flooded by definition. The floodplain is there because floods occur. And so if you build there, there are going to be costs and it's inevitable that you will be flooded out. How long have you been cleaning up? Three days. And you think you're making much headway at this stage? Yes, we're making progress. It's, well, everybody's making progress, but I suppose it'll be, well, weeks before we get organised. It's one of these things that's happened and there's thousands like myself. I, I'm just at that stage, well, I can hardly believe it's happened. I'm now, well, I can walk out. I don't think I can, well, just say thanks for everybody, for the cooperation. As far as help is concerned, it's coming in slowly regarding finance, but this is to be expected, you can't do anything in a minute. I've been up and I've, I've got some, and I'm looking forward to the future. Do you mind if I go and carry on my work? Thanks so much. Thank you.